Well, I'm pretty excited to bring this video to you today. Um, quite a few years ago, I made an uh, incubator video, homemade incubator, and uh, I was really blown away at the response. I'm up to about 416,000 views, which um, is a <laughs> minor miracle to me. Uh, so I thought, hey, you know, it would be a lot of fun to do an updated version. Over the years, I've had uh, tons of people send me pictures of their builds, ask me questions, and and um, I just had lots of time to sort of think over um, different design features, and so I incorporated a few of those into this newest model. And I went ahead and uh, was cheesy and called it the Hatchmeister. Figured I'd make a fun name. Um, incorporated a little bit of use of my CNC machine to just uh, make some decorative, um, you know, engraving on the front. Um, don't let that intimidate you. It's all cosmetic, so it's not necessary at all, and um, you don't need it. It's, this is easy to build without um, doing any sort of fun engraving or anything like that. Uh, but a couple of things. Um, what one you'll notice is that there's just one wire coming out of the back. A lot of people uh, mentioned the whole rat, rat's nest the wires I had coming out, and, and they're right. It was it's cumbersome. I did it. Um, for ease of wiring, like this will be a little more uh, involved as far as figuring out how to get everything uh, feeding into one power in, but um, there are a lot of advantages. It does make it a lot more convenient. Um, also, the Turner, um, the Turner uh, plug outlet controller um, is built into the unit, so all the electronics, everything are inside. I also upgraded to what they call a PID unit. Um, I didn't use one of these before because they were about $40 um, back then. And now they're, this one's only 14 bucks off of uh, Amazon, so that's great. It's got a little humidity gauge on the front rather than uh, having to look inside the incubator. So lots of cool little things like that. The funnel is no longer a tube that you have at the back that you have to hold. It's into the top now. And I made some updates to the Turner assembly that I think a lot of people appreciate. It simplifies the build and uh, your room for error is a lot uh, greater. So that you can, it makes it just really, really easy to uh, create the Turner assembly in this one. Uh, so without further ado, let's take a little closer look. Alright, so here she is up close. Uh, I just plugged it in again, so it's uh, working its way on up. A little PID unit here. And uh, for those of you not familiar, it's basically a thermostat that has got a little temperature sensor I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but it uh, it automatically detects when it's um, you know a certain amount low and kicks on and kicks right off at your set temp. Very cool. This one does read out in Fahrenheit as well. The only problem is it's only resolution down to one degree um, Fahrenheit, which isn't very accurate. So it's tenth of a degree accuracy. I think it's like 0.3 or something like that uh, with um, the centigrade. So as far as um, when you can get it to kick on and off. So I'd recommend leaving it in that setting, about 14 bucks. Um, little humidity gauge. I figured it might be fun to have that uh, read the readout for it outside instead of having to look in. Uh, this is a cheapie. Uh, I got it for six or seven bucks on Amazon. You can get them for probably three or four bucks on eBay. Um, heard some horror stories from some people and other people claiming it was amazing as far as the accuracy on humidity. Um, I am blown away. I did some tests I'll explain later and it's right on with humidity. So totally usable. Temperature not as much, but hey, um, I don't really need that for this. And then this is normally a wall unit like my last one that controls a an outlet basically you can use it to turn on and off your turner motor this one's really cool because it has second resolution so you can control it you can have it come on for five minutes and 37 seconds if you needed um, which is really nice makes it versatile for all the motors out there um, and then of course I had to be cool here and uh, I use my CNC to engrave little logos for each thing and then my my cheesy name that I came up with Hatchmeister a little egg hatching and then I even uh, made the vent holes egg shaped. So again, you don't need to do that. That was just fun factor. Use a CNC. You could just drill some holes for ventilation, and uh, hack those out with a hack with a uh, uh, jigsaw. Then uh, lid similar to the old design. I'll show you on the inside in a minute. Funnel on the top for dropping water in the water tray. So yeah, lots of fun features. Let's look inside. So let's take a closer look at some of the upgrades on this design. It's got a lid um, that's similar to the old one. Uh, where the uh, the um, insulation recesses down into this insulation, double pane. I just used some five by seven um, frames for the glass from the dollar store. Um, I did have to notch out that little corner to accommodate this. You could make this lower into the unit. There's a little bit of room for that, <coughs> or you know just notch it out. wasn't that big a deal. 
And then there's the bottom of the funnel with some uh, quarter inch tubing from Home Depot. And uh, I made it such that um, when you put the lid on, if you just start from this side and then fold it down, it nicely drops into the hole there on the little bowl for humidity. On that humidity bowl, I just bought some cheapy uh, Tupperware from the dollar store, a few different sizes, and experimented until I found one that was giving me about 70 to 80 percent humidity with the lid off. And then what I did is took the lid and drilled some holes. I um, kept opening up the holes bigger until I found one that would give me about 45% humidity with the lid on. And that way it's just stupid simple for you, you know. You fill it up, put the lid on for the first part of incubation, take it off on the last three days, and then you don't have to worry about dialing anything in. Um, I, I centered this light fixture on this uh, back wall here. I probably could have off-centered it and gave myself a little more room, but um, it forced me to end up finding a thinner fan, which in hindsight, um, I'm really glad I did. This is a super thin, uh, it's called a thin liner, slim cooler master fan or something. I'll put a link in the build video description. But it's only 0.6 inches from front to back, so that's really nice. I didn't put much clearance in the back. Probably could have put more, but there's plenty of airflow with that, um, you know, as it is. And I get really good humidity quick response with that. Um, and then over here you can see uh, that's the, the sensor for the humidity gauge. It's also got a temperature sensor in that humidity gauge, but um, I haven't found it to be wildly accurate. The humidity gauge though, I was really impressed. I uh, was hoping it would be within 10%, but you can do this little test where you fill up a little water bottle cap with salt, and then you hydrate the salt with like distilled water, um, and you, you just fill it up until it's, you can't see the water on the top, but everything's saturated. You don't really want a water line at the top of the cap. And then you put that in a Ziploc bag with the sensor, close it up, let it sit for a few hours. And then I, I checked it, and it was reading that 75% humidity right on the button. I would go between 75 and 76. Um, and then I waited overnight, and it just stayed steady the whole time. So I was really impressed. That's, you don't really need wildly accurate humidity readings. If you're within 10%, you're good. So that was a, a bonus for the cheap little thing. Um, as this is probably the biggest change is the way the Turner assembly works. A few people would um, mention that they had a little trouble building my previous unit. And if you, if you didn't um, build it just right, um, it, could, it could end up being kind of a pain to take in and out. And even as it was, you did have to unscrew a screw and then tilt it and get things just right. Uh, this is just a super, super easy design that I, I, I figured this might be a better way to go. I, I still have that same Turner motor, but I flipped it upside down and put it into the space. There's about a two inch um, raised base in this. And uh, there's just a, I, the um, little arbor plate I made of wood um, is flush with the bottom of the unit. And there's a little spring or roll pin popping up out of there. And that way you can just drop on the tray. So super, super easy installation removal and then that'll just spin around turn the tray uh, uh, and then the tray is a super easy design I used of course my CNC to make little cool little egg shapes but that's not necessary you can just drill holes with Fort Forstner bits um, and uh, that works as well I actually had a small incubator I made out of a cooler that I used uh, I, I didn't have a turner I just manually pushed it back and forth from the side but the round holes worked perfectly fine too so pop a whole bunch of holes in it. It's a square uh, for this little notch. You could use a router if that is intimidating. Another easy way to do it is just don't um, don't make a slot. Actually cut a couple of 1 8 inch spacers, glue them on the edge, and then cut another or another strip of wood to go like that. And that will make you have a nice 8 inch gap all the way across. And boom, makes this um, easy to make without a router as well probably just use a couple of popsicle sticks to make the spacer uh, for that. Um, so, and then the channel, you know, if you are doing the router, you just want to make sure it's um, the, you know, the, the diameter of the, the pin, the circle, the, the pin's orbit around the center there. As long as it's at least that, you're good. But yeah, this is a really easy design. Those little um, pieces of wood aren't necessary. I was originally going to make this raised up just about an eighth inch off the base to have a rubber mat already in place underneath. Um, turned out to be a little trouble um, for me, and my egg holes were just small enough that if it was raised up that high, the eggs wouldn't turn even with the mat. <coughs> so I ended up just trimming it down and using those to make sure this was still not going to be flopping around. 
One side benefit of doing that anyway though is that once you get it clear of those edges you've got a little more wiggle room to get this thing in and out so it makes the uh, putting the uh, tray in and out um, nice and easy. Uh, probably a little easier than if it was the full width of the uh, unit. So um, other than that, the same design as far as uh, that cheap half inch insulation with the HVAC tape to make it look pretty on the edges. I designed this one so that I could push this piece forward, take it out, and then lean the other ones in um, and be able to take this whole L bracket thing out. I probably could have trimmed the wood down so that I could lift it out of here and have it, have it clear the insulation, but I didn't think of that while I was building it. Uh, but anyway, this makes it really easy for the user, a little bit more difficult on the build, but in the end result is something that's uh, going to be just really convenient. There's no, um, all the electronics being integral, there's just one cord coming out the back. The funnel assembly, instead of having a tubing coming out the back and holding up a funnel, you can just pour it in the top like I mentioned, so that's really nice. Um, it's compact. Um, I do like the compact design a little better. One side note though is that I think the bigger incubator probably has um, more stable corner to corner temperatures. Oddly enough, I thought the smaller one would have been better, but I did test it um, and it, it took a little more time for this one to get pretty stable. Um, so I'd probably let this one warm up overnight and then you're pretty good. I still had a good hatch rate. I put uh, six Caternic eggs in, or no, five Caternic quail eggs in there, spread them out, and I got a, you know, four out of five of them to hatch. Um, I wish I <coughs> wasn't a doofus and forgot to videotape the hatch. That would have been smart. But um, anyway, I hope this is uh, enjoyable for you to see um, and uh, help you along with the build. Again, don't be intimidated by the little CNC things I did. All I did was some decorative stuff on the front. But you can do this just with, you know, punch some holes with a drill, cut those out with a jigsaw or drill and files. I mean, there's you don't need some of the fancy little things. It'll work just as well. So um, good luck and uh, check out that build video if you'd like to look um, into further detail how this was made. Um, and I, like I said, all those parts will be in the descri description of the build video. Thanks again for watching and good luck with your incubators.